Hello, welcome to my channel. This is The One and my name is George Slackig. I am in Radway, Alberta. You won't find it on the map, or maybe you will. It's a really tiny village, but see what you see behind me there? That is worth gold for a drone pilot like me. And that's kind of why we stopped here because it gives me the opportunity to get some really neat footage of this. And also there's, aside from some power lines that are low enough, so I don't have to worry about them all that much. There's nothing in the way here. So, so grain elevators like the one shown in this video used to be very common across the prairies. However, today they're becoming increasingly rare. The one in Radway is very well preserved and protected as a provincial historical resource. It was built in 1929 by a man named W.A. Cross. It was later sold to the International Grain Company and eventually to the United Grain Growers, who operated it until 1996. For us drone pilots, the site is interesting because it is easy to access and usually quiet. From an aviation standpoint, there are no restrictions in place and I haven't found any bylaws restricting drone use. However, there are people living nearby and you will have to be both discreet and safety minded to fly in the area. Please don't go to Radway and cause mayhem with your drone because you saw my video. At this point I had exactly one battery left to do this flight. That's about 20 minutes of flying time with the Air 2S and I really gave it my best shot. However, flying is only one part of the job as you will see. Uh, yeah, my flying is already done. I've done some really, really nice moves and I'm gonna go home and edit this into some clip with music and stuff and then uh, uh, show it to you. Editing drone clips isn't super complicated, but I found it to be a pretty steep learning curve at the beginning. And even now, after having edited hundreds of clips, I still discover mistakes I made and new, better ways to perfect my clips. It is my goal to get the best possible end result. There's quite a long process involved and I'm gonna walk you through what I do on Final Cut Pro. So what you see here is already imported into Final Cut Pro. All the clips are about three minutes and 14 seconds or so. And that's because I record in 10 bit log profile. As you can see, not all I recorded is super smooth. There's a part here that needs to come out that was just positioning my drone basically. So I go through the footage just looking for the part where a smooth motion begins and then I cut the clip right there. Delete everything that was in front of it and now I'm going to start with my color grading. First balance color and I like to use the white balance instead of the automatic. You find that at the top right. Click on that. Now you have to find a white spot in the picture that's supposed to be pure white. And all you have to do is click on it and the whole picture will adjust to it. Perhaps not necessary with this clip, but I like to zoom in when I take my sample. And there we go. But that's only part one of the color grading because now I will find my preset. I have one that I call Adele Sunny or Sunny Adele. That's because I already tweaked the colors in that to a similar situation where it was extremely sunny with very harsh shadows. The advantage with doing it like that manually is that I can now go to my color inspector and check what was done and tweak it to my liking. See, I'm using the color wheels here and I can play with it until I like the color. To help me with that, I'll watch the clip sometimes several times over on the large screen and then I make my adjustments from there. On this particular day, the sunshine was quite harsh. 
This is where the 10-bit log profile actually allows me to get back some of the detail in the shadows and in the highlights that might be totally washed out. I make my adjustments and watch it over, do that as many times as it takes until I'm happy. Sometimes I have to walk away from this and come back later to get a different perspective. Once I'm happy with the color, it's time to cut the clips. I select an area that is free of jerky movements and cut it right there. Now I'm going over to the stabilization and I stabilize it. Stabilization requires some analysis by the program and it takes a few minutes to process. A check mark will appear on the upper left corner of the screen once it's done. Now I go to the full screen again and I watch the clip, watch it carefully, make sure I like it. Once I'm satisfied with it, I save it, give it a name, number, whatever. And once again, it'll need a few minutes to process. As your drone skills are improving, you might want to take it up a notch and start uploading your drone clips to stock footage sites like Shutterstock or Pond5. I've been using Pond5 for just a few months and while my portfolio has been growing steadily, I'm still waiting to make sales. It obviously requires a lot of patience and work. The editing and uploading process isn't the end of it. The metadata is equally important as this is how people will find your clips. I'm hoping to have some success with this in the near future, at which point I'd like to share the magic formula with you, if there is such a thing. Without further talking, here's a two and a half minute grain elevator show I made with those clips I shot that day. Now these clips are all in 4K, however I'm going to show you something because I usually record with my Air 2S in 5.4K, that is insanely large, and I do that for a reason. That's because it allows me to crop in when I like to. Like for example, look at this clip, I don't really like it all that much, but I could definitely do something if I use the Ken Burns effect in Final Cut Pro. 
It's quite simple. As soon as I click on it, there'll be two frames appearing. The green one is for the beginning of the clip, the red one for the end. I can adjust them any way I like. So I can really modify my clip quite a bit here. For example, if I want to get this grain elevator more into the center of my picture throughout the whole video, I can accomplish that for the most part with the Ken Burns effect. Just watch and then you see the difference afterwards. Now, since my footage was recorded in 5.4K, which is unique to the Air 2S, I can do this and my footage that results will still be in 4K with minimal or no loss. And that's why I like the Air 2S so much. So once I'm done, I just click done. And then I'll watch the clip again on the full screen. And I might even tweak it some more if I'm not happy with it. It's fun to play around with. And sometimes it can make a huge difference, even when you have some unwanted shadows or whatever it may be, some glare in the picture. You can deal with it that way. So if you enjoyed this video or you found something useful about it, I would appreciate if you uh, click the like button, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be awesome. Welcome and thank you.